Hi, it's Dia. Today I'm going to take this picture called Crocuses from my new coloring book called The Buns. And I'm also going to take one from The Buns Pink, which is outlined all in raspberry red. So what I'm actually going to do is take the same picture from both books and I'm going to color a flower, possibly two flowers, depending on how much time it, it takes, and just compare them for you just to see what, what the results are. Uh, with the with the black lines versus the pink lines or the raspberry red lines I should say now I decided I was going to try to use Bayland pencils with polychromos pencils and I chose this because Bayland is relatively new and polychromos is one of my favorite sets Bayland is wax based polychromos is oil based and I wanted to see how they how they work together now the very first pencil I chose was a Pablo pencil in mauve, and I really didn't like it. So you can see that little bit of a darker area. So I erased it a bit, and then I went right to the Balins. And the Balins don't have names or numbers, although they are working on that, and I hope that I have really cool news about that soon. Um, but I took the liberty of naming them myself in the meantime, and the color that I'm using now on the whole area of this first flower, I named Wisteria. Now, all I'm, all I'm basically doing now is filling it in. I'm going rather lightly, although I really don't have to alter the pressure at all because it, it is the first layer, and I do want that first base layer of this color to be relatively light. If you're not following me, I hope you subscribe and hit that little bell button because very soon I'm going to be announcing a giveaway in which I'm giving not Balins, not Polychromos, but I'm going to be giving a whole 150 set of Prismacolors and it might be this week, so hit that subscribe button. Oh, now I'm taking a polychromos pencil. This is one of my favorite colors. It's light ultramarine, and I sharpened it super, super sharp with that Mitsubishi KH20 sharpener that I will link below that I also reviewed previously that I love. It's great for polychromos. It's great for Prisma colors. It's great for Bayland. It's great for all of the pencils that I've used, except for the Conti pastels. They don't fit in there, sadly. I did find a little handheld wooden sharpener. I'll put that link below, too. You can't get it from Amazon, though. So what I did with that ultramarine is that I filled in the lighter area around the center where the stamen are. I used another Bayland pencil, and then I went back to the light ultramarine blue, and I'm doing the thing that I always do. I go back and forth, and I start to build the layers, and I start to build a dimensional look in the petals. Now, crocuses are, I, I, well, I can't say all of them. What I was going to say is some crocuses are very thin, meaning the, the, the petals are almost see-through or maybe translucent is a better word. So as I put these layers down, I'm keeping in my mind that the ones that are sitting behind the others might show through. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave indications of that as I, as I color. Now this is a Bayland pencil. And hold on, let me find it. Okay, this one is grape. Now right there, I'm doing the first indication of the one petal sitting behind the other petal. So that little area of overlap would be slightly darker. So I'm um, showing that with this, with this grape. And I am going back and forth with the Balins between grape and amethyst. Amethyst is a little more plum. Grape is a little more pure purple. 
or what we would consider pure purple from like a Crayola box. I'm gonna leave this first flower in real time just so you can see what I'm doing because I'm gonna recreate the second flower on the pink version. I'm gonna to try to do it exactly the same. So you're not gonna to need to see it twice. You can always recreate the second one if you have the pink book from the tutorial from the first one. I have a group on Facebook and I am a member of several coloring groups. And I wanted to say that I've seen people comment that they have been afraid to post because they see some people post excellent coloring or what they think is excellent coloring. And I just wanted to say that I hope that if you want to post something, even if you don't think it's fantastic or out of this world, other people, first of all, might think that it's beautiful and you might inspire someone. You might, you might, you may have colored something that they were just trying to figure out how to work on and you might not even know it. So just do it, just post it there because you might inspire someone. And second of all, every single person, this is, Pablo Picasso said this in one way or another. Every single person that's an expert at something started out as a beginner. So the bolder you are and the more you post out, out there and share your stuff and just let yourself shine, the better. So I just, I just wanted to say that in the, in the middle of this. Oh, that's a polychromos. I think I missed a color in there. I think that was yellow, polychromos, um, dark cadmium yellow. This is crimson, also sharpened to a wonderful sharp point. And using all these colors very lightly over one another lends to the translucent look of these very delicate little petals. Also that light ultramarine blue, and I'm gonna do this in another video. It's almost like a uh, like a unicorn color, like the unicorn is like the big thing now. It's it's that um, that kind of glowy, uh, translucent look. So that's a that that's a good color to keep in your translucent arsenal. Now that's another polychromos. And I'm trying to figure out what that one is. I think it's manganese violet. And I'm starting to draw some of the veins in those petals. That could also be mauve. Either one of them would be fine. That dark area that I made on that petal on, on the right is sort of a shadow. Oop, back, back to the Bayland. Grape. And then back to the Crimson. Polychromos. Now right about here I realized that these pencils were working really nicely together. I also knew that I was going to take the white polychromos, and even though I made those very fine lines, I was going to go over the whole thing. Whoop. Now this very center area, I wanted it to be a yellowy kind of orangey look. So that's cadmium orange. And then I'm kind of going back and forth with orange glaze. I'm not really doing anything fancy there. I'm just kind of making a couple little uh, 
a little lines coming out to indicate stamen. And then I'm going right back. Let's see. That's the manganese violet. Some more lines. And what I was saying is I'm going to go over everything with the white, even though I'm making those fine lines there. Because I want one layer to look like the, the lines are a little deeper within the petals. And by going over it with the white, that'll give that first layer. And then I'll go over the top of that with another purple. Oh, here's, here's the white. And I've been doing this for a while now, and it still amazes me how nicely the white polychromos pencil blends everything in. And I don't know if you're anything like me, but I always have to buy extra white pencils and extra black pencils. More crimson. Making more lines. So that's that second layer of, I don't know if, if you would call it veins within the flower, but lines and details that look like veins. And I have the point very sharp, so the details are very fine. And I love that crimson color alongside of that ultramarine blue. I should say light ultramarine. I'm creating some shadows here. With mauve. And how I do that is that I, I just make a darker area next to the petal that's on top of the other petal. So the petal on the bottom is the one that gets a little tiny bit of, of the shadow. Now that's a Prismacolor Blue Lake and I wasn't crazy about it. So I blended it in and I figured I would just leave it. It wasn't that much of a big deal that it was gonna affect the whole image. Now I'm blending in those other lines that I did in Crimson. Making some more detail and sometimes I just go over the leaves in various areas, N nothing in particular, because the leaves aren't perfect. I added some middle purple pink to that area in the center. And used earth green yellowish for some leaves and the stem. And I'm not doing anything really fancy here. And I used Let's see what that was. Oh, that was Hooker's green. For some detail, I always make the area right underneath the flower that goes into the stem a little bit darker.
and I'm adding some bister to the leaves. Well, there it is up close, not perfect, but an, a pretty crocus. And now I'm gonna do the exact same thing in pink. Well, not in pink, it's outlined in raspberry red and the book is called Pink, so I just wanted to see what this was gonna look like. And here is the whole thing again, but twice as fast. Bayland, Wisteria, Oh, and I printed out these sheets because I wanted to be able to do them side side by side, but I did use the Bayland pencils not too long ago as I tried out um, some of the colors in a Create Space book. Now, I don't I don't dislike Create Space as much as some some people do. It's not my favorite because it it is very thin. And I think that Amazon was just caught a little off guard and continued to use the same paper they were using to print books. But as we all know, this coloring wave is still rocking and rolling. So what I'm doing is putting together a petition that I hope you all will sign. And I'll put that link below. I, I just want to kindly ask Amazon and create space if they would at least give us a few choices to print um, coloring books on. So I feel like that would help the artists and the people who were purchasing the coloring books. So once again, look for that link below and click on it and please sign up. I have just about 300 signatures now and I would love to get about a thousand and then once I get a thousand I'll I will draft a very nice letter and see what what they have to say and we'll keep our fingers crossed so if if you want to help that would be fantastic Now it's interesting as I'm doing this, I used similar colors and the results look different. It's, it's hard to recreate something perfectly or exactly, but um, this was a fun test. I, I, I did want to see what the difference was, was going to be with the black lines versus the red lines. I can't say which one I really like better. I think it's a personal preference, but I think that the the red lines possibly blend in and vanish a little bit more. And I think you also have the ability to use a, a bit of a lighter hand where the black, you probably have to go a little bit darker to make the lines disappear. Now in my books, I like to use very thin lines to begin with. So I would say for the, for the most part, it's a matter of preference. I also think that I ended up using this crimson color a little bit more than in the, in the other page with the black lines because it worked out so nicely with the red. It was a super nice compliment. It also inspired me to do the whole page, and I will eventually do that. I mentioned that I have a Facebook group a little earlier in this video, and I will put that link below for anybody who's not already a, a member. I would I would love to have you join. I would love to see the images that you that you color. 
And I have to say, it's, it's a very nice group of people. So look for that. Look for that link if you want to be a member also. So that's about it. You get the idea. I was, I was just trying to see what the difference would be comparing the black to the raspberry red. I hope you like this video and I hope you subscribe to me and I guess I will see you in the next video. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.